And uh, welcome. Happy Sunday to each of you checking everybody do what you're supposed to do. Give me an audio check in the chat room. It looks like everything's going well. I've got my little wireless lav mic going on. And uh, today we have a pretty, again, I'm, I'm kind of under the weather. My drink of choice today is just water which usually it's some other uh, beverage besides water. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about VCF MW number 19, 2024 that happened last weekend. I'm going to talk about the experience. The, we're going to talk a little bit about the new venue. Uh, I've got a little pre-roll here I've got ready to share. And then I'm going to talk about the things I got. Uh, but before we do that, let me tell you about the one big thing I got, which was COVID. <laughs> I have been knocked out all last after last week. Now, before I went, I had just come off of a cold. So I think my immune system was down. And then I picked up something and I was only there for Saturday because I was headed to Wisconsin to visit family uh, right afterwards. Got there to Green Bay on Sunday, was starting to feel pretty bad, woke up Monday morning and was a disaster. So I sat in a hotel room in Green Bay for the whole time I was up there and uh, barely got a chance to visit with family. That's where all of this is from. So there you go. There's a little precursor into this whole story about the Vintage Computer Festival Midwest. Mr. Landfill was there eating his $30 piece of pizza, and we had a chance to meet too. So we had a little mini meetup. Greg from uh, Grand Rapids was there. He's not on the chat, but he is in our, he's in the Discord. And of course, Jamie was there. And speaking of Jamie, through the miracle of science, I'm going to see. Here we go, Jamie. I'm going to see if this will work. There he is. Hey, how are you? <laughs> so there's Jamie. So before we do get started, though, let's talk a little bit about the venue. The venue was uh, brand new. It used to be in Elmhurst, Illinois. And this year they moved it to a much larger venue. They moved it to the Schomburg Convention Center in Schomburg, Illinois, which is like this ritzy uh, uh, area of Chicago over on the west side where all the shopping is. Uh, and the hotel they used was the Renaissance, which is a very nice hotel, but a very pricey hotel. So prices went up for a lot of folks. All right, Jamie was kind enough. He stayed at a different location. He was kind enough to come pick me up. So the lovely Count and I came and we stayed at the Courtyard by Marriott. I did owe him breakfast uh, for coming and picking me up. He probably wants more than that. <laughs> and this is the uh, the new location at the Renaissance, the Schomburg. Uh, convention center. It is huge, folks. Wait till you see this. It's a much bigger venue than the Elmhurst, Illinois venue. Uh, more modern. Uh, and before where they were separated into separate rooms, now there was a single check-in, as you're going to see here, and it was one huge uh, one huge conference space or, or area for all of the booths to be in a single space. So you didn't have to move around in between a couple of different rooms, which wasn't that big of an issue. So we got there right at, I believe it was nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. And uh, this is what the line looked like, people waiting. Actually, this line though was waiting for, as we learned a little bit later, was waiting for shirts. Uh, I am wearing, uh, I think this is three years ago, the shirt from that one. I did not like the shirt for the last two years um, and didn't get one for this year. So eventually what we did is we just kind of moved up front. Here's the bulletin board where everybody can kind of say, hey, I've got something for sale, I've got something to buy, looking for something, looking for somebody, all those types of things. So you can see some of the fun stuff up on the board that was buy, sell, and trade board right here. You can see Jamie's little uh, logo, if you look closely right there, he was uh, featured on a flyer. These were the name tags. I probably should have worn my little lanyard, my name tag. It's around here. I think it's in a bag. We'll see that a little bit later. So you grab one of those and you sign it. These are all the auction items. Uh, I did not win anything at auction. Jamie got uh, some nice yeah. kit during an auction, which is pretty good. <laughs> and this is the show floor. And you can see it's pretty, pretty large. Uh, and if uh, you were there, you may have seen yourself. And then just a couple of quick things that I saw. I was really interested in this portable Atari, saw this. Now, everybody's experience is different. And one of the other things I decided to do this time was not focus a lot on recording. I just wanted to re enjoy the show. So I don't have a whole lot. Here is uh, RetroCat was with me. Uh, she decided to join me for her first Inch Computer Festival. And they had the Weather Channel running and she was able to mess with the, uh, the announcement system at the bottom, which was fun. I was really interested in the Naboo here. This thing is decked out with Ishker CPM, all kinds of hardware. So spent some time looking at that. It made me want to break out my Naboo 
and get to work on it. I haven't had the Naboo well, out in a while. And you can see he's got the MSX <laughs> Zaxxon ROM playing there. Catherine found an artist, and uh, this was kind of creative. You plug that in there, and you get you some art. And a lot of the art was retro computer inspired, and I was glad that uh, Retro Cat found a couple of things for herself uh, to enjoy. She, she seemed like she had a pretty good time. We had lunch. This is the lunch crew. This is my acquisition. We'll talk about that a little bit later, one of the things, and I've got that here. This was just one decked out system by the uh, Retro Bits and uh, Matt over there. Uh, this eight inch floppy actually was given to Retro Cat. Here's some, I was doing some Atari 800 research since I finally have one. Here's that Naboo all decked out. And somebody just had a ton of data sets. I mean, they were everywhere. Any, any Commodore data set ever. 8-bit devices was there. Got a couple of uh, items from them. And uh, then there's this real, look in there, there's Petsky characters on that MSX computer. So that was kind of interesting. And then finally there, well, not finally, finally kind of for me was the auction. And this is kind of where the auction took place. Uh, I think there's 72 items they auctioned off. I believe that's what it was, 70, 71. It was a lot. Not trying to overwhelm you with pictures. I didn't want to be like that weird uncle who had that slide projector and we're going here for hours and hours. But I thought I would just show you some of the highlights, uh, some of the things I saw. And again, I have more pictures, but I didn't uh, didn't throw them all in there just because I didn't want to bore you. All right, Jamie, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you on and then uh, just let you have the mic for a while. I'll quiet down. So I, uh, I was trying to take some stuff up. I'd been a bunch of times and check out the free pile, but uh, this time I wanted to take some things up. I had some laptops I had that not necessarily retro, not necessarily super new either, but thought somebody could get some use out of them and I actually found the right power supply, so I kind of take them to them. And I don't think those lasted very long. They were kind of gone when I went back and looked over there. I dropped those off, actually, was able to do that Friday night. I'd never had the Chicago deep dish pizza before, so that was uh, pretty good stuff. I was worried it was going to be like all sauce, but... Uh, the one those guys I went with picked um, was pretty good. And I was I was fortunate enough to go with, uh, you know, if you know, like Ron's computer videos and uh, like Eric's Edge and let's see, I think like Mac 84 and Jeremy's Retro Bar. A lot of the folks uh, that kind of hang around with those guys, they let me go hang out and have dinner with them. So that was pretty fun. And I got to meet some of those folks I'd only seen, you know, on YouTube or known online. So that was a picture of pizza. <laughs> this is going back to the lunch we had. Uh, when that picture that um, Stephen shown, they had these little baby ketchup bottles. I thought that was kind of funny. This was kind of cool. Uh, I mean, there's so many cool things, but this one grabbed my eyes, like a little 3D printed BT100 terminal. Got a little a pie in there. I thought that was kind of fun. This was really cool. I put this on Twitter too, but um, it, a, there was one uh, guy there, a young person, and they had tons of different uh, Braille terminals and things. And it was so cool. And someone had asked, hey, is this the one from Sneakers? And if you go watch that clip from Sneakers, it looks like it is almost like the same model, but the one in the movie was like a, a, a lighter color. I thought that was super cool. And there were all kind of other ones he had, but that was the one he happened to be power cycling it when I walked by, so I grabbed a little clip of that. So I thought that was really neat. This was cool. Um, you know, the, the telco guys there, uh, you know, they always set up comms for DCF, and uh, they had this cool stepper set up here, and uh, you could pull the phone off the hook and t -t 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 -t, everything, you know, snapped to life. And if you actually dialed a rotary number, you could see the things clicking around and lining up the call. And that's just, you know, they did a bunch of other cool stuff too, but that was, you know, what, what this is right here. And now this is also one of my favorite things that was there that's not necessarily, you know, typical retro related, but this, these people had some, uh, the, kind of the whole control or one of the uh, iterations of the control system for the Chuck E. Cheese stuff. So uh, I think I probably mentioned it. I, where I grew up, we, we had showbiz, but, you know, they, uh, it was kind of similar stuff. And of course, um, Chuck E. Cheese kind of went under a little bit technically and showbiz bought them and then they renamed everything to Chuck E. Cheese, I guess. But uh, how this worked, you know, this is, I'm probably screwing it up here, but like, uh, imagine like a two track. I think uh, one track had like all the data for like the instructions for the uh, animatronics and the uh, other side, you know, had the audio for like whatever the show was. And they had all kind of neat stuff there. And this uh, person also recreates the cards or maybe even has new functioning type cards, add some stuff to these for folks that try to keep these systems alive or, or play around with them. So it was, it was very cool. Who was it said Chuck E. Cheese floppies? Yeah, they. Uh, I think uh, maybe there was one point. I think they had this reel to reel, and then I think they went to uh, SBHS. He said there might have been something uh, oddball in between there, and then I think it went to like a DVD, 
uh, thing. And now he said it's like a, a streaming type deal, obviously, in the modern time that we're in there. Uh, I just thought this was cool with that uh, vertical uh, radius display for that old like Mac, like kind of desktop publishing thing from back in the day. That caught my eye. I thought that was pretty cool. Now, this was really neat. And uh, I think it was Dana, kind of in that same area where um, Mac 84 and Ron, uh, yeah, you can see Ron in the background there. But this was one of these, um, I guess they were ANS or Apple Network Server. I don't think it lasted very long, but it was kind of cool. It ran AIX kind of under the hood. Just very neat. I'd never seen one of those before and didn't know anything about it. And he told me all kind of cool stuff about this thing. So I thought that was really cool. Um, just kind of a little piece of niche history there for Apple server stuff, you know. Like I said, yeah, it ran, I think it, yeah, it ran AIX, but it had like, you know, like X windows on top for a little bit easier administration of stuff. Of stuff. That's a front view of that. So yeah, this is what I left with. So you could see, uh, <laughs> I, I thought I was going to come back with less, but ended up, you know, having a decent amount to come back with. I've always wanted one of these disk packs from a, you know, old school system. And so I grabbed one of these because I like to, uh, when we have our hackerspace or makerspace meetups and stuff, I usually bring a few show and tell items too, like core memory or like some uncut wafers. And I thought it would be cool to show folks this and say, hey, yeah, this is 205 megs and look how big it is. And I picked up a, a Ron. Uh, Ron had uh, had us ship him some uh, hoodies a while back and uh, he, he got them put on by an embroiderer. And I just told him he could, I could pick mine up at the show. So I grabbed my Ron's uh, sweatshirt there. And this is the 800 I picked up at the auction. You can tell it uh, needs a little TLC. So um, I've been wanting a, I don't have an Atari yet. I kind of, I really love the old original 800s, but this 800 XL looked pretty good. I also grabbed a, this LC3 Mac because I don't have any old older Macs from uh, Eric, the guy that does the Blue, Sc uh, Blue Scuzzy Eric. And so I grabbed that from him. So I got to put a Blue Scuzzy in it and I'm anxious to play around with that. I think it's all maxed out as far as whatever it can have. But again, I'm a, I'm a Mac noob on that stuff. So we'll have to see what happens there. This is some of the stuff. This is one of the boxes. So the, the auction for the Atari. So they had brought, I think this stuff was originally all together, but the Atari 800 was a separate auction from these other three peripherals. And it was like this cereal box. And it looks like, I guess it breaks out cereal and a parallel. And I don't, you know, Atari people have to tell me. That, that was one of the things in the separate auction that I probably paid too much for, but I wanted to keep them together. And I don't really consider it paying too much if it's supporting the calls of BCF, right? So that's pretty cool. These are the other two things, a 1050 disk drive and this 1010 tape drive. So you got a whole little kind of 80, I mean, 800 set there together. And I did. I had to go to another uh, stand and uh, as folks were kind of wrapping up on Sunday, I grabbed a keyboard and mouse from another guy that had a bunch of Macs and stuff set up. One thing that was kind of cool there, there was a guy that had the um, you know paper tape printer. And uh, it was just kind of, had I guess he had something basically like a macro or something that had some code there that I just spit these out for folks and he tore them off. So if you, I had a video recently, this is one of Ron's projects, this Pico macro, Pico micro Mac. And I've got the V1 somewhere in my mess here, but this is the V2 where you can kind of fit a, um, a Raspberry Pi Pico on it flipped over. So it's a little bit more space constrained or tighter. And uh, it basically emulates like an original Mac with just a Pico. That's pretty cool. This was kind of neat. This was, uh, there's a guy there that's always uh, had some cool stuff called Core 4, and he's got some different things. Uh, I think one of them even maybe works the 64, but it's like a core memory uh, kind of deal there. And this is like a badge add-on, but I think eventually when I get it put together and get the right micro hook to it, it'll be like a Simon game, but it'll be like when you use this, one of these little conductive uh, PCB ones here, you know, you can kind of play Simon on it. For the Atari, I picked up this little, uh, 8-bit Pico card. It's kind of neat. I think, you know, basically you can load it up with images and stuff like that for the Atari. So I grabbed that. I'm looking forward to checking that out. And he, they threw in some of these little things. I think they are to kind of hold the uh, cartridge dealy open there. And this is just a little, uh, for my 2C, it's a USB mouse adapter. So if I'm doing around with any mouse stuff on the 2C. Oh yeah, I forgot to show this. Do you all remember this guy? Remember these floppy digital cameras? I got this from uh, Eric, from Eric's Edge. Well, actually he was in line and I was the, the night before when people were setting up, I told him I'd go grab my t-shirt uh, from the line and uh, I, sw I swapped him the t-shirt for the with the camera here. It doesn't have the battery, but I think I'm gonna just rig it up with a, a little battery pack uh, if I can find something that fits the, uh, the DC in here. I had one of these, it was even an older one back in the day when I worked for a school district. And uh, it was pretty fun. I know it's not great quality, but it's still kind of cool. I might play with this for a little while. So this is from Joe's Computer Museum, and it's retro6502.com. That's one of the Stay Puffed uh, battery things from uh, Ron. 
genuine e-waste. That's a fun one from Alan. Oh yeah, one of the fun things that was there, uh, the stop bits played on late Saturday night, like the last thing going on Saturday night. And uh, that's a kind of a, a band that was uh, arranged with, um, you know, Taylor and Amy from Taylor and Amy Show, Veronica Explains, and uh, Sean from uh, Action Retro. And they actually did pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, so I th they were asking folks not to share the stuff. So I don't know if they're going to share it. So I've got a little bit of video, but I don't want to share that since they said not to. But it was, it was pretty cool. That they were they did a pretty good job. K Mac Vintage just got Will. He has, um, again, I'm not my area of expertise, but Mac stuff was really cool. He has all kinds of hardcore Mac Diag stuff that was really neat. That was something from Mac 84. If you can't hand me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. And stuff, a little scuzzy symbol there, a little April Apple sticker there. Core 64, that's a sticker from the guy that has the core memory stuff. Jeremy's Retro Bar, he was there, met him and his wife. They were nice. Another one from Ron. Dave Vintage Apple Tech, which he usually has all-day streams on Sundays. He's got, he was super nice. And the March and Tosh from there. One from the System Resource Museum. Pick up an old punch card and a couple of these Vintage Apple stickers here. The last thing, Ryan from Everything is Broken Garage was giving out a, a bunch of nicks and stuff and he had this old 46 board so i grabbed it looking forward to maybe messing with this it's been a long time since i messed with this stuff so looking forward to that but yeah with that i'm gonna go mute and i'll switch back over to you outstanding thank you jamie let me go ahead and i'm gonna grab my bag of goodies so let's go ahead and do this right here so let's just get the the small stuff out of the way and then we'll go in uh and some of this is going to be the same now this is and uh i feel bad because i can never remember who i purchased these from these are are custom 3D printed joysticks for specific machines. Like the Apple II, we all know, has a little bit different joystick operation and I.O. than a Commodore 64, but this is all mechanical switches. Listen to this. Isn't that great? But now I have a decent one. And then sitting right next to it, they had one of these. This is for the TI 994A. So this one was definitely one I needed. And I love the color because it matches the TI 994A that I have, which is the tan one. Well, actually, I have a silver one that a viewer sent me, uh, but those are really great. I'm digging those. So here you go. Those, that's a couple of items I got. I don't know why I'm placing them here. I'm going to have to get rid of them at some point. What do I do with my bag? Oh, my gosh. What's it? Here we go. What in the world? Oh, that's right. That's not the bag anymore. It's this. Ha <laughs> ha. Here we go. Now, then we have some things in here. You can tell I'm just not 100%, folks. Or maybe I am 100%, and this is what my live streams are always like. Probably a little bit of that, too. So all kinds of stuff in here. This is the same thing you saw earlier, the Apple II uh, there's obviously a theme here. When Jamie and I go somewhere, someone, one of us will buy something and the other will say, oh, I need that. That's kind of what was going on here. But the great thing about this is I can use this with this and I've got a full solution for my Apple II. Almost. There's something else that'll help with that, which I'll share you a little bit. Uh, I don't know why my badge is in there, but this is the little badge that I wear. It's a little E badge. I need to update uh, my logo on there. This is kind of cool because it changes between four different screens and one of them is a Mega 65. I just left that in there. That uh, was just with me. I didn't get that at the show. This year's goodies that I gave people were uh, stickers. You can see that right here. So uh, if you support the channel, you should have these. If you don't have these, let me know and we'll get you one cent. This is the same thing Jamie showed earlier with the Mac V2. So again, a uh, little copycat action there. Actually, I went there looking for that after seeing Jamie's video on that. By the way, be sure to check out Jamie's video on this if you're interested in that. Uh, also what I was giving away <clears throat> this year, which seemed to be pretty popular actually, uh, most people said that what they were going to do is put these on their Christmas trees, which I think is just the perfect thing uh, for everybody to do. Put these on your Christmas tree. Uh, by the way, those of you getting the holiday gift this year, you're going to get one of these. So stand by. You will get one of those for your as part of your holiday gift. I won't give the rest of it away, but you will get that. Uh, holiday gifts are for the executive producers, those who support the channel, by the way, just in case you're interested. This was interesting, and the label fell off. This is, oh, I put the label in here, I think, so it wouldn't get crunched. I believe that's the case. Yes, here, is that it? No, that's not it. Where is it? Yeah, here it is. This is the Partner 64, and this is really, this is fabulous. This is a whole, it's kind of like if we took uh, the 
Commodore Plus 4 application software made it better and threw it on a cartridge. This thing's pretty cool. We're going to talk about this during a live stream or during a video at some point, but this has a bunch of different apps that you just activate by tapping the button and your C64 uh, boots right up with those apps. It's pretty, pretty cool. I can't wait to share that with you, but I also want to check and see if it would work on the Mega 65. So we'll be spending some time with that a little bit later. Let me put this back in here uh, before it does get messed up. It just fell off while I was in there. Uh, I didn't get a lot of stickers. Can't really see it. It is the Pico Gus Inside, which is an ISA sound card recreation, uh, which is really cool. Uh, and then the uh, Pico Gus little thing there. I, uh, I did see the original C65. Yes, I did. Um, and then also saw the Mega 65 folks. Well, I say I did. I saw them, but I didn't get a chance to spend time. Dan Sanderson with the Mega 65 development team was there. Unfortunately, he and I didn't connect. That's the only problem with one day. I never got around. And then I saw Jim, uh, who uh, had uh, his Mega 65 there too. And then I believe Jim Brain had two Mega or two C65s. And I thought I saw an external floppy, which is very rare, but I'm not sure if that was a recreation or if it was a real thing. But yeah, that was very cool. Let's see, here's the, uh, here you go, here's the lanyards. It's kind of fun to read the back of the lanyard right here. I'll go ahead and put that up there so you can look at it. You can come back later if you want. The free pile should contain, oh, I'm sorry. The free pile should not contain uncool printers, broken CRTs, or anything organic. So just some rules of the road here. That's kind of cool. And then again, you put your name on your front, and then you get to take that. Uh, and then Ron's uh, Computer Club has the dark side of the Mac which is, uh, as he as he put it, AI-generated music. So I'll have to pop that in here at some point. I don't know if I have a CD player anywhere. I, I think I have a USB CD drive in there somewhere. So I'll have to check that out. Uh, what else do we have? Don't worry, we're going to get to the big stuff too. This is, this is Nibble and Bytes Commodore 128 game Nibbles. And let me tell you what. June was on it. June was selling the heck out of these things. And she was hot. She would grab you off the floor. She would run you over and she would show you your game. She knows how to sell stuff, let me tell you. So this comes on a floppy. Also comes on an SD card so you can play it in your favorite vice emulator. Uh, what's really cool about it is it uses both screens. So it use the 80 column and the 40 column screen at the same time. It is RetroCat approved. She played it. I said, is it fun? She said, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So pretty cool. Good for her. And I wanted to support uh, June. So I think it was 20 bucks. Not bad. Yep. So kind of cool. What do we have here? I don't know. Oh, Atari BBS gur Gurus. Those guys, they were great when I... When I told them I had my first Atari, which we'll see here in a minute, they, they were very nice to help and get me started on some things. So told me some things I needed to buy, things to look out for. We also have the, oh, here it is, 8-bit cart right here. This is the Atari XL XE Multicart. And what's great about this is, and this seemed to be a theme, everybody is using the um, Raspberry Pi Picos for... Um, their modern attachments to their retro computers. The Pico is really opening up some really cool things. And this, I really like, the 8-bit Pico cart. You put it in your Atari, uh, but you can upload files to it, and then you can play. It's like an ST to IEC, but it's in a cart. So I guess, actually, it's more like a Kung Fu Flash for the Commodore. So really, really kind of cool. Uh, again, it was really neat to see what people are doing with the Raspberry Pi Pico, a lot of projects based on the Raspberry Pi Pico this year, which is very cool. Can't wait to try that. Uh, future live stream, we'll probably be looking at that. So lots of live stream fodder in here, folks. Uh, I also have this little guy, which is the SPSD for the Apple IIc. Again, using the Raspberry Pi Pico. And uh, again, that'll be great because now when I combine this, with this and wherever that other thing is uh, here, the mouse adapter, I've got a complete uh, system so I can play games, run software, and I've got a decent joystick for my Apple IIc. So really looking forward to that. And let's see, what do we have? I think we're about done here and then I'm gonna have to clean off my table for the small stuff. Uh, oh, the nibbles and bites card. 8-bit uh, devices had the best uh, business card. Check this out on a PCB. Chris Auger was great, great information. Uh, scan that if you'd like. Uh, he's the one who's got all the uh, <clears throat> the Apple II and the Atari stuff. But then on the back, I love this. Check it out. There's a little circuit 
bore. He, he actually said if you solder a few of the parts, and he didn't say which one, that it would actually do something, but he didn't tell me what it was. I'm not sure he remembered, honestly. <laughs> so, all right. So there's that. <clears throat> so let me put all this back in the bag, and then I'm going to show you some of the bigger stuff. Um, but you can see part of the fun of going to the show is, is snagging things that maybe you've seen online, things that you want, things that make your retro computers better. And as you know, on this channel, I'm all about adding modern devices to my retro computers. And I got just a whole load of fun stuff. Check this out. Not only did we get to have a conversation with uh, Mr. Landfill while he was eating, again, his $20 pizza uh, from the uh, place, he dropped by a few things. And one of the things uh, he said, he actually let me know he was going to do this. And he said, um, I have a few things for you. Now, this one is very nice. He's, now, I don't get to keep this, but I mentioned on a live stream that I really wondered if this device that's in here would work with the Omega 65. So check this out. For, for, for him to trust me with this, Phil, that's awfully nice of you. And I promise I'm taking very good care of it, okay? Check this out, guys. This is like uh, unobtainium, <laughs> right? So this is a 1764 RAM expansion. I believe this is the 256. And what we wanted to do was see if it would, uh, and my camera's doing the Fritzo thing. Let me get uh, this here to help it. There we go. Um, well, what I wanted to do was see if it would work in the Mega 65 with the C64 core. Now, what I have since learned after this made the trip all the way to me is that the C64 core does not support this device. So the good news for Mr. Landfill is he's gonna get this back a lot faster than he thought he was going to. Uh, the bad news is, unfortunately, it does not work. We already know because I read the documentation. The C64 core in the Mega 65, that does not work, which is unfortunate because I really want to play with it. I may plug it into another device, though, before it goes back home. And let me share with you what that device is. Many of the, You don't have to pay to support the channel. You can do like Mr. Landfill if you want, and you can just gift me. How about this, guys? So this made the trip. Uh, Mr. Landfill was nice enough, said, oh, you know what? I've got a spare. Who has who has a spare one of these? Hey, Dan. Uh, he had a spare and uh, brought it all the way down to Chicago for me. And now, as you all know, I have wanted a C64C for quite some time. And uh, this one is um, overnight burn-in, all okay. Oh, keyboard's in good shape. I'll probably do a little touch-up, a little clean-up on it, uh, get it all ready. But then before... This goes back, I do plan to just kind of play with it just a little bit, see how it works. I'll be testing the RAM expansion here before I send it back, but really looking forward to that. So thank you, Mr. Landfill. Everybody, uh, thank Mr. Landfill in the chat for me. Yes, I know it's not for you, but it is for the channel, for the community. So this will, once I get it uh, all cleaned up and everything, what it'll do is probably become the C64 that comes out during live streams, videos, uh, I am going to plug the Ultimate 2 Plus cartridge in here. It'll be on here regularly. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to open her up, get it all, everything. So it's fabulous. So thank you, Mr. Landfill, again. Not something I purchased at Vintage Computer Festival, but something acquired there thanks to the generous support of Mr. Landfill. Thank you for that again, Phil. But the last couple of things I want to share with you. First of all, I've already mentioned this a couple of times. Oh, this one is nice, folks. Uh, and it's big. It's big. Let me let me move. I got to move a lot of things here. I got to move by. By the way, check out the video on this thing I did. Oh, by the way, that's on the new channel, Retro Combs Tech. New videos coming there. I'm working on some stuff. So if you just are interested in the things I use or the tech I use, I got a separate channel trying to get the retro stuff away from the new stuff, but still kind of related. So make sure you subscribe to that channel. It's at Retro Combs Tech. If you've not subscribed to that, please do that for me. So I found this on a shelf and I, much like Jamie, I really was looking for an 800, but this one spoke to me because it is, check it, check this out. Let me just see if I can do this without tearing the box up. Yeah, the box, just the box alone is in good shape, right? But look at what we had here. So here is the reference card. Here is the owner's guide. You can see all of this is in pretty good shape. Um, 
it's got the uh, it's got the uh, wear, wear not from use but just from age. <clears throat> you know, got a little discoloration. I wish this had been in there. Evidently, who owned this originally actually had the uh, 1020 color printer. That would have been fun if that were in here, but that is not in here. But check it out, folks. Here we go. And of course, I've got it turned around here, but this one is in pretty good shape. I wouldn't say it's in mint. You can see, but it is still got the plastic on the keys here. It's got the plastic covering here. Uh, keys are in really good shape. Doors operational. It's got some of the you know, the, the scratches where you kind of plug it in, right? Um, it's got the uh, power supply. I've got to see if there's a modern power supply. It does have the switch for, of course, we won't be using that, but that's kind of nice that just that it's included. But it is in really nice condition. So we put the card from 8-Bit Creations in here, and we'll be able to play all the world's software from that card so i'm really looking forward to it i mean even even still has the little parallel bus plate and i know a lot of times that's missing so let's see this is number serial number 131905 so again just in really i'll probably clean it up a little bit i don't think there's a lot of dirt on here though but it is very very nice i've got one more thing that uh i need to show you let me go ahead and let this thing get focused there we go but here's the last thing. Now, this is going to be tough. I'm not sure if I have enough room to do this, but I really, I have not even opened this yet, but I've wanted to open it. It's pretty heavy, guys. So this is the box. Oh, my gosh, it's even heavy. All right, so you can see it doesn't even really fit. Oh, you know what? I could probably do uh, this. Oh, there we go. That view is going to work. There you go. And you get a little preview of what this is. Let's go ahead and open it up. And this has been all sealed up, wrapped up, closed up. This is, this is, this is the biggie. And uh, this I purchased for one specific reason, uh, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute, is I'm going to put the box on the floor, and then we are going to come back and do a piece at a time. It's just like the Johnny Cash song, one piece at a time, and it didn't cost me a dime. It cost a lot more than a dime. It really wasn't that much, though. Uh, so let me just go ahead and show you what we have. So worldwide service and support from Texas Instruments. This is not a Texas Instruments computer, though, okay? So we'll put that over here. And the first thing we'll do is, wow, he did a really nice job putting all this together. Let's just go ahead and tell you what it is. All right, so this is the TravelMate 1200 data terminal. So it is a data terminal. And so my goal is, one of the things that Jamie and I are maybe going to do at our next Makerspace event is we are finally going to, I say this, we are finally going to get our Pi DP eights and put those together and one of the things you can do on a pi dp is you can hook a terminal to it so i thought what better terminal to have than one that's portable although portable is as you'll see that's it's a word i don't know so sure it's a word here uh but uh we would be able to use this but the, there's another cool feature about this that i'm going to share with you but it, basically what it is is a portable terminal so people would lug these around and hopefully log in to something from somewhere We'll do, the, we'll do the components and then we will lead up to the actual terminal. So let's see what else we have. Here we go, we've got our RS-232, probably a null modem cable here. Inside here we have our Texas Instruments Silent Z20 RS-232 adapter. So Jamie is gonna help me figure all this out, uh, but it looks like we plug into here, plug into here, we'll probably have to go from here to nine pin would be my guess. Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, then we'll be able to plug that into the Pi DP. So this is something we will probably need right here. So let me go ahead and put all this. So we, I think we kind of know what's coming up here. This is, if this is what, if this is what I remember, this is so cool, guys. Check it out. You're going to love this. You're going to love it. An acoustic coupler. Check it out. And it doesn't have a little thing. It just has this cushion. So you put it, the headset right there plug it in and then you strap it on like a like you're taking it's 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 uh, blood pressure you just put it on there and there you go so it looks like this could have rolled up and gone in there at some point i don't know uh probably could i think it was probably designed to go in here uh, i won't fool with it now but and then you just put that phone on there and then you do that and then you've got an acoustic coupler so it's nice to have the whole thing uh, what might be nice for a display is just to have an old phone plug it in there so that people can see actually how that used to work. I feel like there's stuff in here I didn't even know I was getting. Holy cow, this is heavy. What is this? 
This is the battery packs. These don't even look like they've ever been used. Sealed lead acid battery. Wow. And these have never been used. Do we think they would even hold a charge? Oh man, what do you think? So I don't know if it needs both of them or if it's one at a time and you can uh, keep one charged and flip in the other one. Wow, that's pretty cool. Now I did not know that that was coming with it. So here we go, here's the, the infamous TI. Man, this looks just like the one that came off of the, oh, look at this. It's a plug-in, man, this is, this is plugs into the wall this way and you hope it doesn't fall out. Look, it's even got, uh, so you can screw it right in so it doesn't fall out. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's heavy. Hopefully this works. Last item. Here we go. Let's see if we can. And this is the PS de resistant or whatever the French say. I always like to say the P's that are resisting. There you go. Let's uh, zoom in here a little bit. Here is the Texas Instruments Silent 700 data terminal. Now what makes this unique is it's not just a terminal, it's a printer. And it uses standard fax paper that you can plug in there. Uh, and so all I got to do is find a roll of fax paper every, uh, evidently. So now I think to open it, let me go ahead and bring up the desk view. You got these two little buttons here. I can zoom in here too. Whoa, there we go. Uh, I think you press these and then you just kind of open it up. Yep, there you go. You open it up right here. I'm going to be very careful. Oh, look at that. Looky there. And so you can adjust it here. You've got a little thing here to adjust it. That is a nice keyboard. That is pretty nice. And then you've got uh, power, upper, oh, this is interesting, uppercase, lowercase switch, on or line, or online, local or copy. I have to figure out what that is. Somebody has uh, written on here, printer paper. So I guess they want to know that if you hit print, whatever's on here, is that's what's going to happen. It's going to print there. So the goal is, hopefully we can get that, we can get the Pidey P set up, and this would be my little display during a show. So we can do the thing, but then we'll be able to see it up here. Uh, so that's that's kind of what I'm hoping. I think it looks really cool together. Uh, I love the kind of retro but modern kind of vibes that it brings. It's a little more modern terminal connecting to the older Pidey P8, but that's kind of what I'm hoping. Uh, you want to see around here a little bit? See the the svelte fat lines. <laughs> this thing's man. This thing's kind of chunky, isn't it? Uh, so then in the back you've got your power. Looks like uh, the connector here. Now I, I think I thought there was a, a VT100 cartridge already uh, installed. We'll take a look at the bottom, uh, but it was supposed to come with a VT100 cartridge, and I sure didn't see it in here. So maybe it's already installed. And then you've got your uh, line outs or your, uh, for your phone lines, but probably will not do that. All right, so let me go ahead and close this right here. And then let's take a look on the bottom here. And so we'll just push that in and that closes up nicely. Not bad, pretty nice. All right, and then we'll turn it upside down. Uh-oh, so, oh, so this comes off so that you can get to your, um, or did, oh no, it's broken. This is broken, look at this. Of course, you know, it's not gonna be perfect, but this should have this little wing right here. See that, There's more, it's, it's missing on this side, so I'm gonna be very careful with that. Maybe I can figure out something in 3D print, uh, a replacement and glue it, that might be a possibility. Let, before I break the other one off, let me go ahead and do this. Okay, and let's check the bottom out here. So this looks like uh, this is where the battery packs go, right? There we go. Yep, that's where the battery goes. It looks like it takes both of them. So you've got a plug right here. So both of those batteries would go in there and then you would get power. Uh, a little bit of burn or a little bit of wear right there. Uh, 20 volts AC, 60 hertz. Okay, let me go ahead and put this back on. So this slides in here, slides back there and Let's do it this way. There we go. So probably will not put the batteries in. All right, so that is my haul, and that is our VCF FW, no, VCF MW, there we go. All right, so that is my haul from 
the show. Ms. Live is contributing to the lovely accountant's business account for me. So thank you for that. Always appreciate that, uh, Ms. Love. Always a great supporter. And on top of that, Ms. Love is an executive producer. So that's why he has the little wrench. If you would like to uh, join along, and also Ms. Love is uh, one of the ones who gets my annual holiday gift because he's been an executive producer for the last year. But if you are interested in that, I have to do this. Here you go. Go to buymeacoffee.com uh, slash retro combs and you can learn how to join. And at the $2 per month level, that gets you in the Discord. So that's the easiest way in. The $1 a month is just, hey, I like what you're doing. Do that. If you are not interested in buying me a coffee, you can also go down to the bottom. You can join via YouTube. I hate that option because less of the money comes to the channel, but I know a lot of people like to consolidate it all into one. But if you'd like to do it down there, then that'll bring you in at... That will bring you in at the C64 level at the $3 a month. So you can go there, look at all the benefits for the $3 a month, and you get that if you hit the one down below. And again, if you have something that you want a gift that you've heard I've needed, wanted, uh, then uh, much like Mr. Landfill, uh, I'm going to gift him a uh, subscription uh, and membership for the Commodore C64 because he deserves that. And uh, then he can join us in the Discord if he likes and be a part of the chat after it ends. We've got, uh, we've got some really great folks in the Discord right now too. Uh, Evil Jay has really been contributing a lot of fun stuff. Uh, he's our probably our newest member, so uh, if you wanna see what he's up to, Jamie now has a separate channel on my Discord, Jamie's Hack Shack, so if you're interested in Jamie and his stuff, until he gets his own Discord, uh, you can uh, join uh, and we'll get you in there too. So, and then Jamie will work out a deal eventually uh, Jamie will probably do some membership stuff and maybe if he wants to continue to use my Discord, we'll figure out a way to kind of meld the two streams and, and keep it going. Hey, th thank you everybody. I'm gonna get out of here. I should be able to say retro combs out. Thanks for joining guys.